Good afternoon, thanks for joining me again. We are going to begin a new series today. Uh, we've spent some time the last couple of months looking uh, at, at several different topics and just finished up um, with the Psalms a couple of weeks ago, took a week or two off. But we are going to start today looking at a new topic that we're going to spend a couple of months in, and that is the topic of the spiritual disciplines. This is a topic that uh, maybe if you're not too unlike me, you're a little bit unfamiliar with, not super uh, comfortable with the topic, one that just kind of haven't maybe spent a whole lot of time studying, haven't maybe, uh, if you're like me, haven't spent a whole lot of time practicing all these. Uh, but there's a, a book that whenever you talk about spiritual disciplines, you almost have to to look at, and that is Richard Foster's Celebration of Discipline, The Path to Spiritual Growth. And I'd highly encourage you to go pick up a copy of this. It is a phenomenal book. Uh, he, he has just done a phenomenal job. This is actually the uh, special anniversary edition, I believe the 25th anniversary, I can't remember, 20th, 25th anniversary. It was written, um, I believe 1978. So this was this is even a, a slightly older edition, but uh, it, it is a very, very good book. And as we begin looking at these, again, I know that this is something that maybe we haven't spent a whole lot of time looking at. And if you have, that's fantastic. Please um, share your wisdom with me. Uh, but it's something that I hope that we can study through together, but not just study, but learn to practice these and learn to and grow together through the practice of these disciplines. Uh, but as we begin, I, I want to take this week to just kind of look really it's chapter one in his book, but it's, it's really just an overview. And the question that I have is why study the disciplines? Why study the disciplines or better yet, why practice? The spiritual disciplines. What's the point? Why should we practice these spiritual disciplines that he lists here? In order to benefit from them, we must first answer this very basic question. If we can't answer the question of why we're practicing these, then it's going to be very difficult for us to actually gain any meaningful benefit to actually grow from it. And ultimately, the, the reason that we practice, hopefully the reason that we practice, the purpose of practicing this, the disciplines is for spiritual growth. The reason that we're going to look through this book, the reason that we're going to look at these spiritual disciplines that, that Jesus himself practiced is so that we can grow deeper because we want to be people of deeper faith, people who have a more intimate relationship with the Father and it's through the spiritual disciplines that we are able to achieve that. I think some of us may be hesitant or may in the past have been hesitant to practice some of the disciplines because of, of how they're viewed, maybe because uh, there are other groups that have practiced them and we don't want to be like them. And so we've been kind of hesitant. We maybe ha have said, okay, there are certain things. I mean, obviously prayer is in here. We're, we're people who pray, worship is in here. We are people who worship. But then we get to certain disciplines like meditation or fasting or solitude and simplicity, and we say, that's that's just not really for me. And we, we pick and choose which disciplines we practice, and then we leave the rest aside for somebody, maybe another group to practice, maybe somebody who's more spiritual than us is how we might say it, or maybe it's just something that we simply don't think we have time for, or we just don't view as being that important. But I think that we need to understand the purpose of the disciplines in order to better understand why we should practice them all as a whole, not just kind of picking and choosing our favorites. Because I think for me, for the longest time growing up, I, the reason I picked and chose the disciplines that I did is because I thought, well, prayer is one that's transformative. Prayer is something that can help me be closer to God. I feel the immediate effects of that. And I see that, that prayer really has the power to be transformative. And in the same way, worship is something that's transformative. Maybe for you, you say that, well, we've been commanded to worship, or we've been commanded to pray. In all reality, these are all things that, uh, commanded or not, these are all disciplines that Jesus himself practiced on earth in order to draw closer to the Father. And I think if we're trying to be more like Jesus, if we're trying to be as intimate with the Father as possible, we should look seriously at all of these disciplines and, and implementing all of them into our lives. But I think that sometimes, at least for me, it's that I, I've said, I don't want to fast because there's nothing transformative about fasting. And if you've said anything like that in the past, then you might be 
happy to know that you are absolutely right. There's nothing transformative about fasting. There's also nothing transformative about prayer, worship, meditation, study, service, confession, or any of the other disciplines that we will come across in the next few weeks. I have many friends who are far from believers. They, they would not in the slightest say that they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. In fact, some of them are atheists. They'd go as far as to say they don't believe in a God at all, who practice some of these very same disciplines. Maybe they don't pray in the way that we think of prayer or worship in the way that we think of worship, but they, they certainly meditate. They certainly fast. They certainly um, live a, a simplistic lifestyle. They, they go out and they serve their communities. They serve their communities well. They, they do a lot of these things that we, when we look at the, the disciplines, uh, they follow a lot of them. And so it's not the, the disciplines in and of themselves that make any sort of impact or are transformative, but rather they place you in a position where God is able to transform you. Prayer and fasting and worship themselves aren't going to transform us, but they're going to place us in a place of solitude. They're going to put us in a place of submission. They're going to put us in a place where our hearts have been softened and we are able to be molded like clay and God can take us, he can shape us, he can mold us, and he can use us. And when we are in a place where God can transform us, then we're in a place where we are ready to be used, a place where we are ready to grow deeper and be more intimate with him. Foster, I think, says it pretty well. He, his quote is, he says, by themselves, the spiritual disciplines can do nothing. They only get us to the place where something can be done. When practicing the disciplines, we should think of them as, as a path. Um, the path itself is, is nothing special. If you've ever gone on a hike, if you've ever even just gone on a walk, maybe you've gone down to Kohler or you've gone up to, to Tanyard Creek or um, e even if it's just along the bike path, typically when we get on the path, there's nothing really special or unique about the path. Abby and I go to Tanyard Creek far more often than I'd like to admit, especially during the summer. We, we go quite frequently. We'll take the dogs, go up there, and the path itself isn't anything unique, really. It's It's be honest, then hopefully uh, you don't hate me too much for this, but it, it's not really that interesting of a path. But there are a couple of things along the path, especially at the end of the trail of, of Abby's tra favorite trail that we go on. There's a big, beautiful waterfall. And honestly, if it weren't for that waterfall, we probably wouldn't frequent Tanger Creek nearly as often as we do, because the path just isn't that interesting. It, it's it's still good to get out and walk, and I enjoy getting out and walking, and it's good to walk along that path, but the purpose, the, our end goal is really to see that waterfall. In the same way, the disciplines themselves aren't really the reason for practicing the disciplines. While the disciplines in and of themselves may be nice, we may enjoy worship, we may enjoy prayer or fasting or confession or serving, but ultimately it's, it's not for the disciplines themselves, it's for us to draw closer to God, to look more like Him. The final point that I wanna make, and I hope you've stuck around this long, is that the spiritual disciplines aren't for the spiritual elite. They aren't for the rich. They aren't for the extra devoted, if, if that's even a thing. The spiritual disciplines aren't for those who just have an abundance of extra time that they, they need to use. It's not for the retirees. It's not for those who who are now empty nesters and, and have the time to do this. This is for the average Joe, the everyday ordinary Christian. Foster has another line that I, I think goes really well. He says, the disciplines are best exercised in the midst of our relationships with our husband or wife, brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors. They're not nearly as helpful for the hermit or recluse. Uh, the, the disciplines are best used in relationship. And so when we're in the middle of, of busy, hectic relationships, that is when these will benefit us the most. So I hope over the next few months as we look at these, it's, it's going to be probably 11 or 12 weeks that we continue to look at these disciplines. I hope that you will practice them with me. I hope you will implement these into your lives, that you allow the presence of God to come in and transform your heart to look more like His. 
my prayer is that as we continue to practice these together, that we can celebrate the disciplines because they've led us closer to the Father. I want to end with one final quote from Foster. He says, we have only one thing to do, namely experience a life of relationship and intimacy with God. Jesus did it. I hope and pray that we can do it too, that we can come into closer unison with him by following his guidance and practicing the disciplines that lead us to spiritual growth.